Um, so my name's Raj Patel, okay. I'm the admissions tutor, and before I start, you, are you all here for the health and social care programme? I mean, you are going to go to the maths. Strange combination, maths and health and social care, but there you go, you've got to check out everything, haven't you? Okay? So, um, this isn't normal procedure. We, do, we don't film you, it's just uh, we're trying to do some promotional uh, material, and uh, uh, my presentation is going to be going up on the web, but we're not filming any of the um, audience. If it's okay, so. Um, uh, um, it's just to, so that we can use it to, it, it'll, it'll be there for people who, don't, who can't come all the way to Liverpool and still want an idea of what the programme is. That's okay? Yeah? Okay. So I'm going to talk to you about 20 minutes really. Just give you a little bit of flavour, what the health and social, social care programme involves um, and then there'll be a little bit of time for questions afterwards. Yeah? Okay. So I'm going to introduce the programme. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the course so you get some, uh, an idea of what's involved tell you what you have to do if you're planning to come in course and there'll be time for question at the end. Okay, is that alright? Am I ready to go? Is there any questions before I start? Not you or the audience. <laughs> Look at him. There we go. Alright. Okay, so it's a new programme that's been developed, okay? And so it, we now had a second, a first year and a second year intake, but there's no three years. There's no third year at the moment, okay? So it's a fairly new programme. What that means is we're going to ask that question, well, what are people doing after the programme? Uh, and it seems a bit of a strange thing to ask right now when you find out what's on the programme. But obviously there's a lot of pressure on people now to um, <coughs> make sure they make the right choice. And what I'm here is not to persuade you this is the most fantastic all singing, all dancing programme, because you have to make the choice that's right for you. There's a big investment. You're going to be charged, you know, a lot of money to come to come to university Yes, you do get a loan, and it, it's paid back, and uh, you know, you'll talk to the finance people. It's not exactly um, um, the, the same as, as, as other debts and so on. But you've got to make sure that it's the right decision for yourself. So, um, you know, I'm not here to give you a hard sell, but just tell you about some of the things that will be taking place um, um, over the programme, and then you can make um, that decision for, for, for yourself. So this programme um, is called... It's a right, nice mouthful. Health and social care for individuals, families and children. Okay? Why is that? It's because it, it's aimed at those people who aren't necessarily looking for a clinical approach to working with health because we know that health um, impacts on people um, uh, at different times of, of, of their lives. But it's got to focus particularly on children and young people and later life. Why do you think that is? Why do we focus on the health of children and older people particularly? Any, any guesses? Have a guess. Go on. The vulnerable. So, yeah, that's right. Yeah, they, they are the most vulnerable. They need most help. Yeah. So especially when you're starting out, uh, you know, you baby, you, you know, you need round-the-clock care and so on. And so the health needs, if you look at them, tend to be most um, for the people who are at the beginning of the life, at the end, of, and and at the end of the life. So so that's why. So it it it's actually. The focuses are about supporting people. It's not necessarily about treating people, because not everyone wants to get their hands mucky and you know, you know, join in and give people injections and medicines and all that kind of thing. But there's lots of other ways of supporting people. It's very much um, about giving an idea of what the caring professions are. But when we look at caring, that actually means that there's a lot of risks involved. As we said, um, people are very vulnerable. And so a key element of the course is how we safeguard people, because that's at a time that when they're coming for help, that, the most, that they are at the most vulnerable, and we're going to assess it and make sure it's de delivered in exactly um, the right way. So to that end, it's not just coming into these rooms, me talking to you and giving a lecture. There's also a, a substantial placement element, and I'll tell you what that involves later. I'll also tell you about the world of work, which is um, an element of the programme, but that is tied in to the placement, okay? We, deli we deliver the programme in the Faculty of Health, because that's where it sits best. You'll see lots of people walk around with uniforms, okay? Um, then to get nurses, we get paramedics, uh, and in nursing there's different strands, mental health and so on, uh, as well as children's health um, and, and adult nursing, okay? So um, very much we, uh, that, that's where we're based. Um, and the staff who deliver the programme, some will come from nursing, some will come from public health, some have worked in sort of community health sort of programmes and also uh, worked with young people um, and, and, and through youth and community work as well. Okay? So 
that's the background to the program. It, what's involved in the program is this five key strands. So if we look here, we've got development throughout the life course, personal academic development in the world of work, health and well-being, as I mentioned earlier, so supporting, safeguarding and empowering. And finally, we've got um, um, a strand called inclusive community and society. And those five strands run throughout the program over the three years, okay? And I'm going to tell you a little bit about each of the strands, okay? So these are the actual modules. So I'm, a, I'm assuming you're um, au fait that you understand what happens with modules, so that um, each year you will do five modules. And in this particular strand, for example, development through the life course, these are the names of the different modules. So the first year you'll do one called development life course. Uh, with the, the second year you'll do transitions and then finally you'll specialise in whether you want to work with children, young people or whether it's you want to develop um, with um, older people. And if we look at some of the work that um, takes place within that module, very much about development of the flight care, we will focus on different, piece, different groups um, who are vulnerable. So I've got here the story of a young woman Okay, who spent some time in care. And I'm just going to read it out to you. It says, um, and it's by Rachel. She's uh, aged about 12. She said, I've been in care five times since I was six. I had my seventh birthday in care. Then a few months afterwards, I went back. That happened another four times. When I was nine, I came for the fifth time. And then the court said I had to stay till I was 18. Then six months later, my two sisters were adopted and my brother was put in long-term foster care. When all my friends found out, they were sorry for me. But I'm not allowed out anywhere on the, uh, on the street at night, and my friends are. When my friends are still out talking out, out on the streets, me and Nikita have to go in, which I don't think is fair. Foster homes aren't fair on young people. What happened to me to get me into care is that my mum used to hit us. And I told my school, they told the social services, and I thought it was so unfair. Now my mum's learned a lesson, and I want to go back. So if we look at Rachel's case, is she, what does she think being in care involves? Is she happy about being in care? Just okay, what's her feelings about being in care? I think she, she feels that she's being punished for standing okay. up. Okay, right. From a social care perspective, what, what, are we doing her a favour by putting her into care? Are we supporting her? Is that the best thing? What do you think? Do the, the best thing by for not getting hit by it? A month. Okay. But not obviously okay. Yeah. But one of the problems is that when we put people in social care, it's for their protection, isn't it? And there are consequences. Okay. Because if we look at the consequences, okay, for those people who've been in care, it says these are some of the statistics that have come up. It said between a quarter and a third of rough sleepers have been looked after. So look looked after means that you've been in care. That's um, the sort of technical term. Okay. So you know that's quite a big statistic. Yeah? Children who have been in care two and a half more times likely to be teenage parents, much more likely to be unemployed, and it says a quarter of prisons, prisoners have been in care as children. So, and finally, in terms of, we, we, you know, we've got focus on education achievement, you know you, you know, you get pressured when you go back to college and you do exams. The benchmark is one GCSE. That's not even A to C, that is one GCSE. Okay? So that is what is somebody in care is likely. So is it a good idea to put people in care? What do you think? It probably is best to support them as well. But then it gets very expensive, there's lots of support that needs to be. I know you're meeting the needs of that child. How can you ensure that that child is protected? So you can see there's lots of complications about being care. And while we just looked at one group, you need to apply these and look at them. So you've got to have a much greater awareness of what the consequences are of putting people in care. Because it seems a nice solution, but statistically, we might not be doing Rachel any favours, OK? And she, in that particular case, feels that, you know, she'd be much better off. She seem, doesn't seem to have much of, that much of a problem with parents. The problem is, we don't know what the actual problems are. She sees that she's been hit, but she doesn't know what's happened to other children and the family. So might be, maybe Rachel's not the prime target, but there's lots of problems about putting people here. So it's much, it is very sort of um, uh, uh, complex. And if we look about care, okay, there's, we, we, we often think about, you know, young people being care, but also older people 
uh, have, uh, have been in care. Has anyone come across an organisation called Southern Cross Homes? Okay, in the residential care sector, anybody? Okay, it was in the news, not this summer, but last summer. Okay, I mean, they, have, they do pop up from time to time again. Has anyone heard of Southern Cross Homes? Sorry, go on. Um, there, is that, there is that one going through as well, isn't that? So that is Ravensbourne, that's one. That's one that you're thinking of. That's, in a, that's different because there's a lot of people who've been... It's, a, it's home for people with learning disabilities. Is, yes. And they are being... There's been a systematic abuse, it seems, of the, of the clients who live there. Okay? Okay. The big fuss was... That Southern Cross Homes, they, they were a massive company and they had, you know, hundreds if not thousands of residents, elderly residents. They went bankrupt. Okay? What do you think the consequences are for the people who, who live in those homes? Any idea? Okay. What do you need if you're older? Really? What's the main thing you, you want? Any idea? Okay, if, if, if you're old, what do you like? Yeah, you, you, you just want to be left alone, get on with it, you don't like change, do you? Okay, so when Southern Cross Homes went bankrupt, suddenly all these people are being evicted. Uh, you know, thousands of older people are being evicted. Now, one of the reasons that Southern Cross went bankrupt is the way it was run financially. This has got nothing to do with the day-to-day -day care, but if you're running a care home, then, you know, it, it's something that you need to look at is the business model of them. Because now, care is seen to be efficient. Because we're constantly told that care is one of the biggest uh, financial problems that we will face in this country, okay? But some people say, should we be making money out of vulnerable people, okay? And, but, so, so, so those are the kinds of things that, that, that we look at. And what happens, because now, this is going to happen increasingly, okay, it's not just for older people who be in care, is that what happens when you've contracted out a service and it fails? So how do we manage failure? So these are the kind of things that you'll be, uh, have to face when you get out in the world of work and, and, uh, as, well, as well. So that's, that's the first strand. This is the next strand which is called personal and academic development and the world of work. Because one of the things we know is when you come to university, you don't always have the same sort of, the, the range of skills that you require to um, manage yourself. Because when you're at sixth form, or perhaps you're in school, or you're at college, um, very up much, your teachers are on your case, they're checking that you're there every day. Now, we don't do that. I mean, we do try and monitor attendance, and you'll get, you might get an email home. It's not exactly the same as, uh, 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 you know, we won't be telling your parents or anything, saying, you know. So you need to have different skills when you come to English, because you're expected to do a lot less taught work and a lot more work in that li building over there, which is called the library, okay? So you have to be able to develop um, the skills to be operating there. Now, one of the first things that happens, though, is that people come to me. What do you think people say to us when they first come, yeah? They say to us, Raj, how am I going to get a good degree, okay? Okay, and I've got a little quiz to you about what a good degree is, okay? Has anyone come across these characters before? Okay. Any of these characters? Okay. No? All right. I, don't, I wouldn't necessarily expect you. First one's a guy called Damien Hurst. Anyone know how he's famous? Well, he's a... Yeah, he's, he's an artist. Very good. Yeah, okay. Damien Hurst. Attila the Hunt. A bit of his history. Next guy is called Desmond Tutu. Okay. He's a clergyman and politician from South Africa. And the last one is Richard III. So what's Raj going on about? What's this got to do with health and social care? Okay. One of the first questions that people ask you when you come to university is, uh, sorry, in, at the end of university career is, what did you get? Okay. Okay. This is rhyming slang. A first, a two one, a two two, and a third. Have you, have you come across these before, anybody? Okay. It's the way we classify degrees. So the question people come to us and say is, Raj, how can I get a first? Okay. What do I have to do to get a first? And it's not an easy question because I don't know you when you come in the first week or so. You need to develop your skills. I don't know whether you're a good writer. I don't know whether you're good at uh, uh, reading and writing, uh, um, um, collecting information. I don't know what your statistical chances are. You very much have to plan your own way. Yeah? We'll give you guidance and support, 
But we won't meet with you necessarily, we would only meet with you a couple of times a term on an individual basis in the first year. That puts a lot of pressure on you to perform. And if you want to get your Damien, okay, and perhaps not leave with a Richard, okay, it's up to you to develop the skills to be able to do that, okay? So that's sort of bit the quiz over. Uh, one of the um, additional things that we do at John Moores University is called, um, we can provide you with a certificate which is called a world of work. And these are some of the skills that employers often say that graduates don't have. So it's like being able to work with others, being able to lead teams, being able to manage themselves, um, and ensure that they're reliable, punctual, and so on. So part of the work here is that we make sure you have what we call the graduate skills, and there's a range of them there that we certificate. They are, on, they are additional to degree in a sense in that you'll get an, a certificate as long as you've met the um, particular uh, aspects of it, but you will um, <coughs> really, it's not, you, you don't have to sit in any additional exams or, or, or whatever, but we will be assessing those strengths. And a lot of employers, all these employers actually um, value the WOW certificate. And as you can expect, the, um, this particular program also, the, the module ar around um, personal academic development also focuses on what you'll do on your placement, developing your skills. So the placements that you do, it's quite a small placement in the first year, 20 hours, okay? Uh, and then, but it's much more substantial in years two and three when you do 120 hours uh, and an 80 hours of placement. And the question usually is, what, where will I go out on placement? Well, you play a big hand in deciding your placement, but some of the places that people have, uh, uh, have uh, taken have been in things like childline, so you know, the supporting people in telephone counselling, people who worked in Sure Start centres, that's working with um, <coughs> younger children, obviously do work in residential social care homes, might be working with school education and welfare, people have gone in placements uh, in schools, some people have worked in have the Brook, has anyone heard of the Brook, advi Brook Advisory? Okay, do you know what they do? No, the idea what's Brook Advisory? Yeah, it's sexual health advice, okay? Because obviously that's an important part of, of growing up as well. Some people do do placements in the National Health Service. So the whole range of placements that we uh, uh, ask you to sort of participate in. Okay, the next strand is called health and well-being, okay? In which you talk about health as a concept. You might look at um, the way in which um, particular diseases and conditions prevail in particular societies as well. But and also look at how that's, um, 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 <coughs> the, the effects of that are more than a personal sort of aspect to health. There's a much wider social and economic aspect when we're looking at the way in which health um, operates. Health is also, for particular communities, might depend upon, upon um, factors around um, ethnicity, um, you know, especially if you're working with older people with a particular health condition as well, and so on. So there's lots of um, um, aspects of health that will be discovered with di uh, discussed in that uh, particular module. Okay, uh, a very important element, and as we all know, especially in the news at the moment with what's happening with Mr. Savile and so on, is that when we took a, um, support in safeguarding people, that there's been a massive increase in legislation and practice around that. So that is a strand that runs all the way through, and you would really need for almost any job working in health, you'd have to have an understanding of safeguard. Now, when we talk about safeguarding, people very often think about children, but there's a lot of safeguarding work which also takes place with older people as well, yeah? So see, these are some of the things that happen to older people. They may well find that um, they're no longer able to look after their own financial affairs, so they hand it over perhaps to somebody that they feel that they trust, or um, maybe a, you know, a member of their family or a friend, but that can be a temptation too much for some people. So uh, older people are, are, are prone to financial abuse. Much more uh, often is a neglect thing. Somebody said that they're looking on you, you know, every couple of days or whatever, and they don't, okay? Now, uh, that can lead to neglect. And there's lots of uh, other sorts of abuse which may well take place. And in a way, what we were talking about with Southern Cross is an example of institutional abuse. And as we just said about the Ravensbourne 
um, case that's going through at the moment. That's also an instance of institutional um, abuse as well. Okay. Now the final strand is one called inclusive community and society. They're the different strands. In the first year, you look at why particular groups um, feel included or not. In the second year, you look at how, uh, when you're working with particular groups, that it's often best to, to work um, in, in, in small groups. And that gives you the practical skills to be able to do that. So um, uh, that, that's what that module offers. Okay? And th one of the reasons it's important is we think that because we've got access to the National Health Service in this country, that everybody has equal rights when it comes to health. I've got some figures up here. Okay. Now, the first is 71.1, and the second is 89. The first one is taken from Glasgow, and the second is taken from Kensington and Chelsea. Can anyone guess what these numbers, what they represent? Any idea? Go on, have a guess. Um, it's a measure of something, that's a clue. Okay. It's a measure of age. Okay. What does it tell you about the age of those pe people? Sorry? Um, yeah, kind of. This is, this is, okay, the average age that pe people die in those communities. Okay? So why does 300 miles in geographical distance mean an 18 or 19 year difference in age span? Any idea? <coughs> what is it so that's so different about Glasgow from, from Chelsea? Any idea? Sorry. Do you think do you think there's different healthcare? Maybe. Sorry. Is the healthcare more expensive than Kensington and Chelsea? It can't. Well, is it more expensive? He said. It's a rich area to live, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. It's it, it's actually. What do you expect? What do you think is the difference between people in Kensington and the people in in uh, in Glasgow? Mansions. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's a bit money, isn't it? Yeah. They're much financially better off. Okay, so you often think of finance shouldn't affect. You know, finance has a big effect on health, okay? And so if we look at that, and it's not, not something to shout from the rooftops out in Liverpool, is it? You know, the fact that you're born here means that you're likely less 15 years less than people who've grown up in London, okay? So one of the things we look at in that communities is in, in that particular module. Um, is, is to look at why that's the case, okay? So I've gone through the programme so far. What I'm going to do now is just tell you a little bit, obviously, how do we measure you? How do you know? How do you get that, Damien Hurst, okay? You will have one or two exams, not many, yeah? We tend to go more for essays and coursework. Um, you are expected to do a lot of presentations on this programme. In fact, I think that's something you might not be expecting when you come to university. But you have to be able to stand up in front of a small group of people and tell them about something. Okay? So sometimes that's like I'm doing, um, you know, with a PowerPoint and everything. We often use poster promotion as well because in healthcare that's really important. So you would work on a creative piece, massive piece like that, to go on the wall, outline a particular aspect um, of healthcare. One of the ways in which we look at your placement is we expect you to keep a diary or a reflective journal on placement and to start looking at how you can um, develop your understanding of health and social care through that as well. And, and sort of similarly um, for portfolios. So that's the programme. That's how it's been assessed. As I said, it's a new programme. Okay? So the other thing is you, you, you want to know what sorts of jobs you're going to be doing. I can't give you any figures and facts because we haven't got any at the moment. We've, we've got a second year. No one is going to graduate from the programme until next, um, ne until next June. Okay? But we're hoping that people will get careers in social and residential care, um, perhaps working with children and young people's workforce, um, uh, health education, perhaps some work, some work in mental health. 
There are some postgraduate strands which you offer at John Moores University in counselling. We've got perhaps some people do decide they want to um, um, go into nursing, having just said, talked about not wanting to do But There are some master's programmes here that we run for what we call graduate nursing programmes. To do that, you've got to get a good degree. Okay? Uh, it's not a guarantee. We also do, a lot of people are interested in social work, so you can do three years here and then, and then get a master's in social work, um, and some people want to do counselling. We can't guarantee that you'll progress into those. We can't even guarantee at the moment whether those programmes are still going to be here in three years, because we depend upon the government to be able to develop um, the, the programmes as they are. Okay? So that's the progression. Um, okay, so I've been through here. What do you have to do to get here? We're looking at about 280 points at the moment, okay? So this is the, the tariff for, I think, I think there's a minimum of 280 points for most of the programmes at John Moore's University. If you're a mature student, we might look at that uh, different. Obviously, we take other sorts of qualifications like the BTEC National. Um, if you've got any questions about particular um, um, uh, programmes who are different, if you talk to admissions, they'll be able to tell you whether we, we're willing to take other sorts of qualifications um, as well. Okay, so I think I've done my bit. If you've got any questions, yeah, and if, if you don't get your questions answered, you can note my email, you can always email me afterwards. So, has anyone got any questions that they'd like to ask me? Shall I? What access course do you consider? Mm. Oh, like an access course. Yeah, if you're doing an access course into health or social care or social work, they, they, they are often so the ones that we accept. Sorry? That, that sounds pretty acceptable, really, yeah? But if you speak directly to the mission, you know, if you go to the desk downstairs and tell them on this programme, uh, then that, that they, they would be quite interested in... Uh, in uh, they give you uh, information about what's, what, what, what level you need to attain on the access course. Yeah? Okay. I was interested in the fact that you said that this course isn't the social work course. Yeah. But how, how would this, this course... Well, if you're sure you want to be a social worker, then I would say go on the social work programme, you know, but you've got to make sure that that's what you want to do because you've got to learn, there's a lot of legislation, for example, you've got to do for social work as well, yeah? Uh, some people would prefer to work in the community, work with different groups, or they might want to do advice work, in which case it's not necessary to have a social work qualification, yeah? So it's entirely up to you which is the most appropriate for you to be able to um, progress your career. Yeah? Okay. Okay, good. I'll tell you what, we'll do the usual thing. You can get up and go, and then I'll be here if you chat and you come to the desk. That's always a lot less embarrassing. Okay. So it's lovely to meet you. I hope you have a good day. Okay, but make the right decision for yourself. Yeah? Okay, don't jump on a course straight away, but have, ask all the lots of questions. Thank you. Thank you.